Hello from Gothenburg, Sweden. This is the second largest city in Sweden and I'm gonna show you what you can do here in one day. But first things first, uh, it's Fika and breakfast as I just arrived. And I need some warmth because it's very, very cold here. But let's start from the beginning. I arrived to Gothenburg International Airport and took a bus to the city center. You can buy the tickets on the app or directly at the airport. And Gothenburg greeted me with uh, snow, which is unusual actually for the city and uh, cold weather. It takes around 30 minutes to get from the airport to the city center by bus. The buses go approximately every 20-30 minutes, depending on when you arrive. And since my flight was very early morning, I arrived around 9 a.m. already to Gothenburg. I was looking for a place to have breakfast uh, or fika or whatever whatever works and I actually found one in the city center not far from the bus stop. Already you can observe the city from the window of the bus uh, which is actually quite uh, convenient as uh, walking around was a bit challenging I would say for me at least. And now it's fika time. Fika is coffee with something small to eat. So at this place at Cappuccino Cafe, which opens at 9 a.m., you can find, uh, sorry for the quality, you can find sort of combo breakfast for 9 euro and then proceed with a lot of energy to explore the city. Gothenburg has a lot of canals and uh, you can freely see them around the city which adds up to the beautiful architecture. Also trends in Gothenburg give the city a very special charm. It was really cold for me to walk all the time, so the shops in the city center were kind of the savior for me as um, I like sometimes go window shopping uh, to get some warmth inside. The plan for today would be to hit the most popular attractions in Gothenburg and have a bit of walk in the city center. And a bit of history, if you will. So Gothenburg was founded in 1629 by King Gustav II Adolf and uh, established itself as an important commercial fishing hub. Uh, though the city has modernized over the centuries to focus on other industries, it is the birthplace of Volvo cars and home to the Volvo Museum. For example, its proud fishing heritage remains. There's no better hands to get your hands on high quality seafood and on these shores, you'll be spoiled for choice thanks to its wide array of restaurants. Today is one of those rare days when it's sunny and uh, beautiful weather in uh, Sweden, especially in winter. Usually it's very dark, uh, but we are lucky today. So we reached Gothenburg Harbor and uh, in the background you can see the building which is called the lipstick building and um, we will get closer to it and um, the story is that it looks like lipstick and it used to be one of the highest buildings and uh, it's very iconic for Gothenburg 
let's get closer to it. And we have reached the ship, which is now the hotel where you can actually stay. Now, after visiting the Viking ship and the harbor, uh, we will go to Skansen. Um, it's about 30 minutes from here on foot. Gothenburg is very convenient, exactly and precisely because you can explore the city on foot which I like very much the way to Skansen lies close to the water you can also take a bus or a tram but I chose to walk and show you a little bit of uh, the path that I'm going through Yoteboy, as it would be pronounced in Swedish, is a very typical port city and industrial city. And it was very industrial in the past, but now uh, it has been changed recently. And uh, the city is becoming uh, more and more non-industrial, if you can put it that way. I'm not very good with words today. While walking to Skansen, we will stop and walk through the main attraction or one of the main attractions in Gothenburg, Jotteboy, the Haga Street. It is the city district in Gothenburg, renowned for its picturesque wooden houses, 19th century atmosphere and cafes, and the history says that here in this area in one of the oldest areas of the city it was a working class suburb uh, with rather bad reputation which was gradually transformed into a popular visiting place for tourists and Gothenburgers. A major renovation in the area was made in the 80s, 1980s Houses were either renovated or torn down and replaced by postmodernistic replicas. Today, Haga has a population of 4,000 people, a much smaller population compared to 15,000 people 100 years ago. An indication to the gentrification the district has gone through. You can see the amazing decorations as it was pre-Christmas time when I visited all the city and um, enjoyed its warmth in terms of warmth of people's hearts. Today Haga is famous for its small shops, boutiques and cafes.
we have almost arrived to Skans and Kronan, the crown scones, and um, the way on top of it lays uh, through the number of steps. I don't know how many steps you have to take, didn't count them. But uh, the view that you have from above is uh, very, very nice. So Skans and Kronan is the old fortification which was built there to protect the city and um, it had once 23 cannons and it was ready for the battle to protect the city from the Danish and um, during the 19th century the place turned into prison and later to an emergency residency during the 20th century it was military museum inside the unique hall of Skans and Kronen can be used for weddings, parties, conferences and uh, more while you can enjoy the fantastic panoramic views of the city It was a nice walk back to the city center watching the sunset which sets in winter at around 3 p.m. But on my way back I'm still leaving you a few very beautiful panoramic videos. Skansen was a very nice walk uh, and it is not slippery and it's a great experience but it's also good to have some coffee now. At this point I will be finishing my visit to Gothenburg. That is all you can do in one day if you are in a relaxed mode like I was. I thank you for watching the video and see you in my next videos. Don't forget to subscribe and comment.